Hi, hello there, and welcome to another spooky episode of An Anthropologist Watches. I'm Berlin Reed. Ooh, spooky. Only two more days, you guys. Only two more days. What am I going to do when I don't have Halloween anymore? So sad. So, Amber posted this roughly two hours ago. I just got off work. I was still at the gym. I was at the gym, you guys. And, uh... I decided to run home and make a reaction to it, so we'll get it up today, and this is... I was excited about the title, you know, the clickbaity title. I've already scanned this one, and she's like, let's go to the science museum, and I was like, cool, I love museums, and then Target Hall and went to church. Eh, I, I view church about as exciting as the bingo, so, you know. Anyway, spoilers. Watch the whole thing now. And, um, yeah, I'm not really impressed with it. So she is sped up as normal to time and a quarter. So I am an anthropologist by training. I am a retired archaeologist. Those are my credentials. And that's that's it. Before we get going, I do want to say... Thank you to everybody who supports the channel. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you to my members. You all rock. And thank you to everybody who's going to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, you might as well, because every subscribe gets us closer to 2000. And when we get to 2000, I'll do an AMA. And you can ask me all the awkward questions that I'm not going to answer. <laughs> I know I'm terrible. So. I mean... I want to try to record this like in, in as few cuts as possible because I'm getting tired of editing it as much as I do. There's just probably not going to be a whole lot for me to talk about here. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm sure I can find something to talk about. I wish the Science Museum part was a little bit more interesting because that would give me more to talk about. But let's go, shall we? Hey guys, welcome to a new vlog. So we're going to start this vlog off with like a taste test moment. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Wow. Have you guys ever noticed that whenever she's talking about food, like, not necessarily talking about food, but talking about showing us food, she gets like the bedroom voice. You know, it's like, oh, let's have a little taste test moment. You know, that kind of a thing. I mean, it's nothing surprising to any of us who watch her on a regular basis, but I just, you know, pointing something obvious out, apparently. Are you guys ready for it? No. I've had these. Uh, I'm a big pickle fan. I I, I like big pickles. Um, this is so bad. But yeah, I, I don't like these. There's something about the way that they package them that makes them taste funny. Like, they're not that crispy and... Personally, I don't like the flavor. It's a hot mama, hot and spicy pickle. Um, let's try her. It says on here no refrigeration needed, but your girl refer And that might be what makes them taste funny. Um, besides, I prefer a cold pickle over a warm pickle. Wow. So, family friendly, you guys. Refrigerates literally everything. Ooh, that's potent. Okay, so a random fact about me, I love a pickle. But I like the pickles that are like snack size because the texture, because I'm weird about textures. So I normally hate pickles that are big, especially Oddly enough, I believe her about the texture thing. It's just sometimes I think she's just using it as an excuse. Sorry about my phone. It's way too far away for me to do anything about it. Um, so there's that. I'm trying to think. I like all of them. I like crunchy food, so I don't really care. So as long as this thing's not like... That's why I don't really care for these. They're not that crunchy. Ones that are the size... Oh, that does not look good. It's all like foamy. What is happening in there? Okay. It just means the pickle's having a good time. I'm so sorry. Please don't let your children watch my videos. That looks disgusting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hate this. I, I did drop this on the floor, so I think that's why it's bubbly. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the worst palace face. Look. All right. I know I'm making innuendos here because it's a giant pickle. But A, her thumbnail is her with this thing in her mouth. B, she's got to be molesting it and like, oh, I've never seen one that big kind of a thing. And like right now she looks like she's on the verge of, oh, I just, it's a pickle. They're not that great. These particular pickles, they're, they're not that great. If you like that kind of stuff, I'd say shoot for the O snaps. They're at least crispy, but... Amber, sweetie, honey, if you want something that shaped in your mouth all the time, then just go play for Team D. It's okay. I don't honestly think anybody would hold it against you if you decided to play both sides. I mean, I have no room to talk. I don't really want you representing my side of the team, but whatevs. I don't get to choose who's on my team. Anyway. Enough team talk. Oh my god, let me get a plate. This is like getting juicy. Okay. <laughs> and the fact that she's like acting like a five-year-old before she eats this totally tells me that she bought this fully understanding that she was going to be making D innuendo and D jokes. And that's why she's acting the way she is. Like, I get that this is a setup. It's a trap. I get it. Um, it's just dumb. It's it's so juvenile. I just it, I can't roll my eyes hard enough, so I'm not going to because I might injure myself. But whatever. I mean, we all have our moments when we're twelve, I guess. <laughs> and she's got to watch herself. She has to watch herself nibble on the thing. <laughs> I I'm so sorry. My pause game is strong today. Oh, she is sour. I mean, it's a pickle. She's supposed to be spicy. Okay, there's a hint of something, like, once you swallow, but... That's what she said. I've been watching Sean of Steel too much. I blame him. It's mainly just really sour. Oh, wow. Um... I wouldn't be able to enjoy this. It is so sour. Like, I can handle spicy all day long. Like, I'm a spicy girly, but when it comes to, like, sour stuff, not really for me. It's a pickle. They, they pickle it in vinegar, usually, at least here in the States. What did you think? Anyway, I, whatever. I'm sure whoever Hot Mama is is completely upset that Amber Lynn did not like their pickle. And if you've made it through this section of the video, you deserve a gold star. As a matter of fact, go ahead and put a pickle down in the comment section. <laughs> I want to see how many pickles I get. Oh, no. I'm not editing this, remember. So we are currently at the Science Museum. Here's my thing. Uh, we have the Children's Museum in Indianapolis, and it's actually one of the better children's museums in the nation. So, I mean, Indianapolis has something going for it. Um, they have a large, like one whole floor of it's basically just a play area. And even as an adult, I enjoy going through it. It's a lot of hands-on fun stuff. It's pretty much everything she's going to do here, except for like the silly string. But again, I haven't been there since I've moved. So they may have changed things up. Um, but leading up to the hands-on area, there's, like, the rest of the museum. There's, like, a giant mummy exhibit. There's a couple things about dinosaurs. We don't have dinosaurs in Indianapolis. We don't have dinosaurs in Indiana because we were part of a prehistoric, like, giant frickin' river that basically just took, shoot everything away. Um, geology. I mean, there's a lot of other interesting, not hands-on-y things in the museum, like educational stuff. Not that this isn't educational, but you get what I'm trying to say. We could have seen any of that, and you could see that she was walking past it, but 
we head straight for the playground, basically. And I mean, did she just choose not to share the rest of the museum with us because clickbait, you know, she she knows how to troll us or is this the only thing she could focus on? I, I don't know. Anyway. Silly string. I think it's silly string. I wonder what it's supposed to be. See, that's the thing, like, tell us something, anything, anything would be good. Cool. You get to watch your nostrils walk past all of this silly string. Awesome. Riveting content. I think she's trolling I, because there's this sucks so much. <laughs> I get that she's bad at this, but this just sucks so much. It has to be intentional. I wonder I'm being. I'm not being mean, actually. I am truly wondering. Amber has, in my opinion. Sorry, which keep in mind, I'm, I'm an anthropologist, not a psychologist. Um, Amber has some kind of body dysmorphia going on. Like, I, everybody calls it reverse body dysmorphia, but it, it doesn't have to be reverse. Body dysmorphia just means that you don't view your body the way it looks, the way it actually looks. So, okay, walking past the funhouse mirrors, they're showing you how if you change the focus of a lens. I know this because I go to the Children's Museum way too frequently when I was a kid. Anyway, the, the whole point of the mirror is to show you that, you know, changing the angles or the warp of the of the mirror actually changes how the light reflects back, basically. And so we get funhouse mirrors. But I wonder if walking past those, if any of them, like, corrected the image in her head. Or, yeah, so, like, when she walked past the one that she showed us, I wonder if... She finally saw herself the way she actually looks. Like, did her brain finally click? Not long enough for her to be like, oh my god, I actually look like that. But to be like, oh my god, I could look like that? Okay, like, she finally saw herself the way we see her, is what I'm trying to say. Because she clearly does not see herself the way the rest of her audience does. So, I'm just wondering, because I think that would be fascinating to know. Um, I know people have talked about like the TikTok filters where uh, some of the some of the kids are like, oh, it helps with my body dysmorphia to use the different TikTok filters. And it's like, well, that's cool and all. But so if that helps, I wonder if maybe, you know, the old school filters, a.k.a. funhouse mirrors, do the same thing. Anyway. And I tell you what, the water table thing, because this is supposed to show you how, like, um... Okay, so the one at our museum has, you know, all this stuff, too. But it's, you, you can create dams and stuff, so it teaches you how water flow works. And uh, water pressure, that's, that's the other thing. So you build a dam to build up the water pressure, and then you can sail your little boat down and other floaty things that are in there. But also, there was, in ours, there was, like, a, a mill, kind of a spinny mill, and you could sh it showed you how you could generate... Um, electricity with it if you could build up enough water speed basically to get the mill to turn so it was kind of like a there was sort of a, a purpose to it um, but mostly people just played in it because it's water and it's designed for children children like to play in water most of them um, I don't know where I was going with that but yeah I mean you can see the sand and stuff the sands they're supposed to show like currents and i think if there's enough of it you can actually build eddies and stuff i don't know children's museums are fun too bad we don't know anything about this one. Oh my gosh amber what are you doing <laughs> i'm gonna put on a show you should at some point hello welcome to the show meow mr rogers meow anyone That was it. 
that right there shows me how little she can think on her feet. Because she was having a moment. And she and her mother was clearly videotaping. Videotaping. I'm old. Um but you know, she she went through the effort of getting behind there and putting the gloves on and she was going to do something, but she can't think on her feet fast enough to actually do anything more than let's have a show. Like can't even make a Mr. Rogers or a Muppets reference kind of a thing. Like or just continue the show along with Hi, how are you? I'm good, Mr. Cat. What have you been up to today? I'm making this entertaining. Oh my god, I'm already lost and confused. <laughs> what is with the angles she's filming at, too? Oh, hey, look, she's a big red cherry. Oh my god, what if we get stuck in here? They'll come get you. Like, lost stuck? Or like... They have to take a mirror out stuck. Wait, is that a mirror? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Claustrophobia. Oh, I love the mirror maze. That was actually one of my favorite parts. And then the mirror maze led into um, a different, another mirror, uh, mirror, another maze section. I forget what the second section was for. I forget what the second section was for, but it wasn't mirrors. It, it, it did something else. I forget what, though. Ooh, that's making my headphones vibrate. <laughs> it's an ant. It's a caterpillar. It's a monarch butterfly. It's a praying mantis. Oh mantis style. Don't fuck with the mantis. You will take your ass out. Sorry, I'm swearing too much. As soon as I saw this section and I and it says it's a sensory zone. Um, as you can see. I, I knew I knew this was going to be her favorite section. I, I knew it. it. Gets to touch all the things, all the things. For those of you playing the home game, it said, went inside a planetarium. It's the Milky Way. Dark. Uh, you may even be able to catch this band of grayish light across the sky. It was a is. comet. Call this game, name your own Look, constellation. The and constellations. Boss, we get some game right there in the armpit. And that big guy is Perseus. So we've got the whole cast of Clash of the Titans over here. Whoa. Was that guy doing this live? I mean, probably, but dad jokes. <laughs> What the hell? Who the hell in the generation that he's talking to has seen freaking Clash of the Titans? Like, how many of you have seen Clash of the Titans? Yes, I've seen it. Shut up. So Mars is what we call a terrestrial planet. That means it has a rocky surface. You can stand on it. When we Hypothetically. I mean, it, it does. It's, it's hypothetical that we could stand on it because we haven't sent people to Mars yet. Look, I will bicker on little tut on this. this. Who wants to be the first to Mars? Get out here past the asteroid belt. These planets are all what we call gas giants. Uh, that means they're made almost entirely of atmosphere, mostly hydrogen and helium, but a, a few other trace chemicals in there, like methane and ammonia. Wow. Uh, and of course, when, so when we're looking at Jupiter here, uh, our spiral arm galaxy, and the core is this thick, bright central bar. Uh, and actually, this is actually pretty impressive. So. So we've watched this now and we know that Amber went into the planetarium and we saw her get planets explained to her and cosmoses and univi and universes, whatever, comets and, and the three dimensions of space. Do you think she still thinks the Earth's flat? 
I wonder if she argued with the guy. Uh, sir, I read on the internet that the earth is flat. Um, sorry. Guys, so it is the next day. Um, I'm getting ready. My mom actually said, burn that shirt. The night last night, which was cute and fun and fresh. Had her watch the movie Barbie because my grandma didn't like it very much, but I loved it. So I was like, well, why don't you watch it? You could be the tiebreaker. My mom said she kind of liked it. Um, I personally cry in that movie. It because you're five. Uh, I've talked about the Barbie movie a couple times. I don't know, man. It's a, like the greatest part of me is just like it's a kid's movie. So move on with life. But I know that there's like a lot of people who are very polarized one way or the other about the Barbie movie. But a lot of people are just kind of like, if you let it go, it'll go away, <laughs> you know. But apparently Barbie means something culturally to the last generation for some reason it's it's just so good there's like deeper meaning than just like oh it's a barbie movie yeah yesterday it really isn't though it really is just a cash grab it it, it really is just a barbie cash grab movie but you know whatever if you read into it what you want then i mean if it fulfills some niche in your life i guess i I'll never see it, probably. Um, but I'm damn sure even if I did, it probably would have no impact on me long term. Hey, um, I saw filming after the Science Museum. We had so much fun, but we ended up going out to dinner and then I went to my grandma's to visit her. So we were there for a bit. But today she's been over at her grandmother's a lot, uh, at least according to her. So that's interesting. Like, I wonder. Sorry. I wonder if and when we will ever hear her talk deeper about her grandmother. Because uh, there's, I assume, some healing that needs to occur there. My lip itched, sorry. But right now, I mean, I guess if her mom's camera shy, then like her grandmother's probably like, hell no. So you notice none of the other family are even anywhere close to her when she's recording. And every time she goes anywhere with more than one person, more than her mother, I guess I should say, she doesn't record at all. So I don't know if she's just gun shy being out in public again or if the rest of the family is a very hard no on the recording at all. Hey, we're actually going to church. Um, last Sunday, my mom was like, church or casino? And I was like, casino. If you guys don't know anything about me, I am agnostic. But my mom does believe in God and all that, so she wants to share this experience with me. I have been to church several freaking times in my life, but I will say it's been a very, very long time. So, Yay. I am going for her today. And then after that, I'm actually going to be meeting her boyfriend's family. So I'm super excited for that. Of which we get to see none of that either. I know that her mom, um, it sounds like her mom went through the 12 steps, did the 12 step program to get cleaned up, which if it works for you, it works for you. Um, but it sounds like she's quintessential Ember. Ember. This is how many times in our lives have we seen her make this exact face? Like she chews on her tongue, sticks it all the way out, stares vacantly off into the distance as her brain processes whatever it is she's getting ready to say next. So I wonder if her mom's trying to walk her gently into a 12 step program for like overeating because I mean, Amber's an addict, so and it takes one to recognize one. Now, can they help each other? I don't know. I really don't. I, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of negative stuff. I know they have a very complicated relationship. I also know that they're still kind of in the honeymoon phase. And as long as Amber's mom can keep Amber entertained, I think everything will be fine. And I'm not sure what the rest of the day entails. That's what he's singing. Wow, all right. That, that song isn't about church or God in any way, shape, or form, but hey, you do you, man. Y'all, 
It's like 10 30 p.m. It has been such a long but amazing weekend, like truly. So I met my mom's boyfriend. Truly. Family, love, like literally obsessed. And by the way, church was actually. Have you ever met somebody that you're you don't love and are truly obsessed with immediately and then later on in life decide that they are the devil? Like I I we hear her say this about pretty much every person she ever meets, especially people that we will never meet or someone that she's like desperately trying to impress because, you know, love bomb. Um so what what were they really like? I mean, I'm sure they're lovely people. Um but It's like Amber's never really eaten a food she didn't like. Amber's never really met a person she didn't like. Actually, so much fun. It was nothing like I expected. I've never been to a church like that. Like a live band, like that started off by singing Come Together, one of my most favorite songs ever. Once they started. One of your most favorite songs ever? I hate to be a dick, but who even sang it, Amber? Anyway. I mean, did you hear it before it became part of Across the Universe and everybody rediscovered the Beatles again? Or did you actually hear it before that? I'm cynical. But go on. Tell me about how it's your favorite songist ever. I get even to the more like, I love Jesus, I love God. Once it became that, I did feel a certain type of energy and I ended up crying, which... Because you cry at everything. To be fair... Um... There's a, a trap, like for legitimately, there's a trap in churches where the there's a reason why they don't just like hit you up front with all the heavy stuff. Why they, why a, a sermon works up to it, especially at a, a revivalist style church, which was I'm going to guess this was considering like the live band and a lot of singing and stuff. Very probably non-denominational or or one of these new denominations and it's probably very focused on like the youth and trying to get young people involved by the rock music um but they'll lead you into it and so they they consciously build energy up like emotional energy up as the sermon goes on because the the music is the sermon and I'm sure there's like little bits of of actual like preaching in between, but the whole purpose of the music is to keep you engaged until they get to the end. And then they probably did a, a call to the altar, call to conversion. I think they used to what they used to call it. And by that point, you're so worked up emotionally that some people will just go to convert because they're like, "I've been called. I feel the power." Um. And then afterwards, when all of the the adrenaline and the emotion wears off, then they're just kind of like, the hell did I do last Sunday? Kind of a situation. And and th that's the trick. And then you go back next, you go back the next week and you get that, you get revived again and you get all hyped up again. And you're like, oh yeah, I remember. Um, and then they start slipping in all the insidious shit. I'm not a fan of organized religion, any of them. So there's that. But I mean, hey, a live rock band. Honestly, it isn't surprising because every time I've gone to church, nine times out of ten, I shed at least one tear. But the music was only one. It was just like beautiful. Like it was just a really good time. I loved it so much. My mom knows that this is not going to change my opinion on how I feel about God, whatever. I don't really talk. Who wants to put bets on how long it takes Amber to convert? Yeah, that, that's kind of the face I'm having right now. Who thinks it's going to be a few to six months before Amber decides to convert because her mom keeps luring her to church? N nothing sinister there. I'm just, you know. But eventually, Amber takes on the personality of whoever her caretakers are. And if her mother is an avid churchgoer, Amber's that's like the major connection connecting point for Amber. And... Or for the two of them. So who wants to place bets on how long it takes Amber to convert to Christianity, specifically this church, uh, with her mom? I'm giving it three to six months. I know that's a spread, but maybe even Christmas. That's 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 a good time for people. Uh or Easter. Easter's always a big emotional time too. But yeah. 
I give it three to six months before Amber converts and we start hearing Preacher Lynn. Oh, Preacher Talk. Talk about religion on my channel. So we don't really have to get into that. But like, I know Yay. that for her, God is the reason why she's eight years sober. And to me, that is special. I actually just go back. That's, that's why it sounds like Mama Lynn did like a 12 step. Because uh, most of the 12 steps do that whole like, you got to give up responsibility to a higher power kind of a thing. I'm not going to give my opinions on 12 step programs because if they work for you, they work for you. That's 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 all it has to do. And it worked for Mama Lynn. So back from Target. So we have a haul. Let's do it. I needed some Yay. TP. So we got some of that. I always. Yay. Butt wipes. I just like to have a few um, cat scratchers for my cats. So I got a new one. I will say if you have cats, the best thing you can buy are these cardboard scratching post things or even just the flat ones that are just on the my cats love the flat ones that just lay on the floor they'll slide on them they run and they jump and they because i got hardwood floors that's that's the noise you guys hear in the backgrounds is them playing like bob sled with their scratch po their scratch pads but the other thing that you definitely need to get even though they're kind of pricey is some kind of cat tree um i will say aldi will get one every get a couple every now and then they're reasonably priced and they're decent quality we've had one for like three years now uh, and it's still in really good shape so yeah if you have cats you've got to give them things that they are allowed to destroy or they're gonna go for your stuff they're gonna go for your furniture and your bed and your clothes and they will find something to destroy so just give them something to destroy one i needed some just loose leaf college rolled paper Other thing why these mini diet cokes random fact about me i never finish a regular size diet coke so these mini since when not only did you finish the giant ass cokes that you would door dash to yourself from sonic you would fill the bottle fill the cup back up again with the diet coke that you had in your refrigerator so i know you're lying because i've watched you drink two whole Diet Cokes in a row. Whatever. The ones are actually perfect. I've been craving couscous, and this is one of my favorite kinds. It's the Near East Couscous Mix, roasted garlic and olive oil. So I Does anybody else do couscous, instant couscous like that? Like, that's the only brand I've ever seen. Does Uncle Ben's do one? That seems like something Uncle Ben's would do. But I swear this is the only brand I ever see of this stuff. So... This got to be an off brand, right? I got two of those. I like with my tuna salad, um, wheat thins. So I got some original wheat thins. I do like to have something sweet at night. Don't come for me. Just at night. So I got these Kinder Bueno thingies. They're crispy, creamy chocolate bar, but it has like hazelnut, which reminds me of Nutella, which pretty much is Nutella. Let's be real. So I've never. Have you never had a Bueno bar before? Which are German, by the way. Don't don't let the name confuse you. I had a Squishmallow before, but there's these like mystery squad by Squishmallow thingies. So I got two of those. I'm kind of excited. So I got. Yay! Toy time has begun. We're going to start collecting toys again. Huzzah! I got a Swiffer and I also needed the little wet Swiffer thingies. So I got some of those and it's leaking. So I need to put this away now. The only. I like my Swiffer. I don't like the disposability of the Swiffer. Swiffer wipes but i like the device itself so what i do is i went out and i bought a 10 pack of excuse me i went out and got a 10 pack of microfiber cloths and they fit i mean it's just like a normal cloth and you put it on there just like you would the swiffer cloths you will have some overhang but it's not that bad anyway you just tuck those bad boys into the corners like you do the Swiffer cloths and go to town. It does the exact same thing. And then you can just wash them and use them over again. And then you're not constantly throwing away Swiffer rags. They even work for mops. I mean, the, the microfiber, you can even use them to mop. The only way I can sleep is with these Ollie Sleep Melatonin gummies. They're amazing. I'm not buying those just because you like them. So quit trying to hide products to me. However, if the only way you can sleep is to give yourself melatonin. I mean, whatever. It, I take melatonin, just not all the time. And it sounds like she does. Which would be concerning to me, honestly, because you're not supposed to take it like that. And I'm running out, so I needed more. So I haven't used a dishwasher. Um, I can't tell you how long because I usually... 
I call BS on that, but go ahead. Wash my dishes by hand, and then I'll put the wet dishes in the dishwasher just to, like, dry. Like, I'll just... So quirky. So, so quirky. I actually do know people that do that. I don't get it, but I guess... Um, if you think you can get your dishes cleaner than the dishwasher, unless you have like a junk ass dishwasher, which I understand because mine's kind of like that. But honestly, you really can't. The dishwashers are designed in a way, especially the newer ones, the, the heat itself um, sanitizes the dishes and it's a temperature that you you can't tolerate as a human. So. The dishwasher, especially in the newer ones are going to get your dishes cleaner than you can. If you don't care about that, or if hand washing is clean enough, go for it. Uh, but I do think I've got at least two friends that do the whole washing the dishes by hand and then putting them in the dishwasher to dry. And they're like, it's genius. And I'm just like, just put them in the damn dishwasher. <laughs> Whatever. Just leave it open and they'll dry. But I decided, you know what? I'm going to try using a dishwasher. So I got some of these Cascade Platinum Plus dishwasher situations. Also, those are kind of like the best stuff to use. So type deals. I have a small trash can in my bathroom. I don't have any bags for it. So I just got some of these Glad drawstring bags. Last but not least, I got this Mr. Beast bar. It's milk chocolate. I heard a lot of. Is that like the Mr. Beast or just randomly happens to be called Mr. Beast? And of course you got candy bad things about it so i want to know like are the bad reviews real so maybe i'll try it on camera please don't so you purposefully bought candy that you knew the people told you was crap so that you could taste it and see if it's crap okay and yes my cat my cat <laughs> yeah he sits like this he loves to just like starfish is is he's just, he melts he just he just oozes fur he's not fat he just oozes like a puddle of cat on the carpet it's very funny Hi, he's even Hi, asleep Hi, that's Barbie. adorable Hi, all right so that's the end of that all right some interesting things did occur in this video, I do wonder if Mama Lynn isn't trying to walk Amber down the same path that she went down to get clean. And if she is, good luck. Um, also, I do put down three to six months before Amber converts just out of like, you know how Amber is. Will it stick? I don't know. But I definitely see her like exploring that avenue. Will it be good content? I don't know. The church does seem pretty active and all that. Uh, the children's museum was meh, but only because we didn't really learn anything about the children's museum. So, and most of the time we were just staring at Amber's nostrils. So either that or her feet. So it wasn't that exciting. And... I wonder why she met the boyfriend's family. How long has Mama... Well, I mean, no one probably knows, but... How long has him and Mama Lynn been dating? Is it one of those long-term boyfriend-girlfriend kind of things? Why is Amber meeting his family? Um, I think it's interesting that she keeps going to see her grandmother, but yet won't film any of it. She just tells us about it. I'm not saying she's not going to see her grandmother. That's not my point. I just think it's interesting that she's trying to get that connect, that maternal connection back with her grandmother. So we haven't heard, isn't her brother supposed to live in the area? Like we've not heard anything about it, her brother. So maybe he doesn't, maybe I'm just misinformed. And what else happened that stuck out? We're not going back over the pickle. That was, that was a trap. Not falling for it, but I will play along. Um, yeah, I, I think anything else that I was going to say, I must have said in the moment because nothing else is really sticking with me. So, yeah, if you've made it this far in the video and you didn't leave a pickle or if you just want to leave another one, uh, go ahead and leave a church. Take me to church. And yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on here. But there kind of was at the same time. 
we know this is the weekend because she said it was. So we're kind of sort of getting a timeline here. How far behind are we? I don't know. Logically, she started her lease on October 1st, but I mean, I don't think our lease is technically at the first of the month. But that's because Pennsylvania is a very strange place for renting. It's very odd here. I've never had some of the experiences renting here as I have anywhere else. It's just strange. Not a, it's just strange. Anyway, um, but this is a weekend. We know she's been there for at least two weeks. I think she's going on three timeline wise in the videos. Physically, she must have been there for at least a month because it's the end of October. And if the first was her move in date, then this would be um, this would be the, the first month that she was there. So there's that. And. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, great. So. All right. Thank you again to everybody who's supporting the channel. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my members once again and my interns. Well, my interns are my members, but I feel like I feel like I need to give my interns extra love because because grad students can unionize, okay? <laughs> and interns can't. Um that's a that's an academic thing. I'm so sorry. I hate to drag you guys into that, but it's funny to me. Um yeah. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you to everybody who's going to give it a thumbs up. And if you've made it this far in the video, you may as well subscribe. You may as well do the bell thing so that you know when I upload again next, which is pretty much any time Amber uploads. But I do other content as well. I am branching out. Um, I did promise a analysis of the first few videos of Amber's when she moved to Oklahoma. I was going to say Oregon. Um... I am working on that. Chat and I are having discussions, so we'll see where we go with that. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, just off the top of my head, it's it's fascinating that it's taking three weeks, give or take, for us to get back to the old rhythm of chewing on camera doing the most mundane mind numbing stuff for the vlogs um the we're buying toys again um that kind of stuff we're ordering food again on camera and admitting to it that kind of a thing we'll we'll eventually get a weigh in because she can't help herself so we'll eventually get a weigh in and i think when we do finally get the weigh in and she'll probably talk about whatever new diet thing she's going to be doing then um i think we will have finally come to the i don't want to say full circle because i feel like this was like a bump in the cycle because of the move so i think when we get to the point where we're once again discussing diet and health journeys which we will get there eventually i have faith um i think when we get to that point we can reliably go back onto the traditional amber cycle so i do also want to kind of address the amber cycle um thing i i feel like i feel like i can contribute more to it and, and just kind of because she's become aware of it a long time ago um her behavior has changed and that's because it's like the participant observer thing by participating and observing i am um affecting the the thing that i'm observing so my mere presence and observation is changing it my participation changes it further same kind of concept with amber's being aware that we are aware of the cycle whether she agrees with the cycle or not she knows it's there she knows what it is and so I feel like her behavior has altered slightly since that point, which I know was a long time ago, but I do think the cycle still stands with some alteration. So that's something I'm working on. Um, but I need to track down who it was who originally made the cycle. I don't need to physically track him down. I just want to be able to put his name on it because he did create it and I don't want to I want to cite my sources, basically give credit where credit's due. So there's that. And yeah, 
that's pretty much that's all I've got. So this was relatively short for me because I don't think I have to edit very much, if anything. And yeah, I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.